Hello and welcome to another fantastic episode of Paired Programmers. I'm Keith Ott and I'm here with Paul Weldon. So today we're talking about the second part of creating your own Google Chrome extension and getting it into the Google Web Store. So if you haven't watched out our first part, make sure you check it out. Uh, we walk you through all the initial parts of it. Uh, check out the uh, link in the description below. We'll take you right over. Uh, make sure you check out that video. So today what we're going to be covering is how to actually prepare your application for distribution and and we're going to walk you through how to upload it into Google. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to put the uh, to uh, Paul here, and uh, he's going to walk you through preparing it for distribution. Okay, so as you saw before, this is our tomato timer application. We've had fun developing it locally and working with it. Now it's time, like I mentioned, to bundle it up and take our application and push it to the store. So the first thing we need to worry about is performance, trying to minify our application, make it smaller, get rid of all the developmental things that we use to make our lives easier, and get it ready to go right to the store. So the first thing you'll notice in our simple index file here is we use a couple of different tools to actually inject the CSS, either the full-blown uh, development uh, style CSS or the minified version where it's just going to be one file obviously for performance and we do the same thing for some of our um, JavaScript files as well. So what we use to bundle up our application into a distributable folder is Gulp. Many of you have used it before. Great tool. There's a lot of great videos on YouTube. Um, this is what we threw together real quick just to handle the simple needs that we have. So we have a number of different uh, Gulp modules that we use, renaming folders, uglifying and making our things smaller, JS Hint to make sure that everything is in order, that our code, there's no big bad JavaScript code smells, and a number of other things. The Gulp file itself is pretty simple, injecting items, linting our things, uh, we have a couple other different tasks specifically for the distribution. We do things a little bit differently versus development and some of our watch capabilities versus when it's time to bundle it up. The main job, and all this code again, is available on GitHub if you want to kind of take this as a starter kit for your own little gulp distribution task. Otherwise, there's plenty of others out there. The two main tasks that we have is a default and then a distribution. I'm ready to do a distribution, so I'm going to, in Cloud9's terminal, do a gulp dist, and that is going to run, do all the tasks that we asked for before, take our application and make a distribution folder, and in there, it's just going to have the files that we need. So typically in a node modules, as you know, there's a lot of extra stuff. Um, we don't want all that. Um, even in Bower, there's a lot of other things that come down. We want this small. So we have a distribution folder and it just has the files that we need. Now we're ready to download this folder and continue with the submission. So to save some time, since Cloud9 is a uh, web-based IDE, I've already went ahead and downloaded this distribution folder. So I want to take all my files here and I want to zip it up. So I'm going to use, in this case, I'm going to use pzip. You can use any of them. pzip's a free program in Windows. Uh, a lot of other operating systems have it baked in. I'm just going to go ahead and do add to zip. And I now have my uh, distribution, uh, the whole, everything wrapped up into whoops, the zip file here. So next you'll want to sign into the Chrome Web Store Developer Dashboard. Um, I've already gone ahead and do this. I've done this. And from here you'll be able to actually add uh, the Chrome Web App here. Uh, one thing to note though, before you're actually allowed to publish uh, the application to the Chrome Web Store, there is a one-time $5 fee that you'll be required to pay. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and click Add New Item. And the first thing that it's going to do is prompt me to uh, agree to their developer agreement. I've already gone ahead and, re and read this, and I agree with this, so I'm going to go ahead and click Accept. So the next step I'll need to do is to upload that zip file that we just created. So I'm going to go ahead and do Choose File, and I'm going to jump into Dist, and then choose that zip file. And it's a little quirky, you actually have to click Upload then to go ahead and upload it. 
All right, so then the next thing it'll do is to bring me to the configuration parts. Um, now, I'm not going to go through every single spot here, um, but if any item you can hover over, and they give you a very detailed description of the information that you'd want to put into there. Now, there are a couple things that are required. You do need to specify the category, so in this case, this is a productivity tool, and you do need to specify the language. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. Now, at this point then, um, if you've gone ahead and paid the $5 fee, you can go ahead and click Public ch Publish Changes to get it into the store. Uh, at any time, you can click Preview Changes if you would like to see what it looks like uh, within the actual store. So if I had added screenshots and things, I could see it here. Or at any point, um, you can go ahead and just click Save Draft, uh, and you'll also be returned to this screen here. Now, here you can also go ahead and specify additional information, such as your developer display name. You can set up test accounts and things like that. And at that point, that's pretty much all there is to go ahead and publish uh, your uh, Chrome Web App to the Chrome Web Store. And with that, that's all that's required to get your Chrome Web App published to the Chrome Web App Store. So thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And make sure you follow us on Twitter, too. We've got a lot of other great content uh, coming up, and we, want, and we want to make sure that we keep you up to date on it. Thanks for watching.